All right, so we're checking out the Secure SI-012 portable soldering iron in this video. And I've done a number of reviews on uh, Secure soldering irons in the past. I'll link some of those in the video description because uh, I'm not going to cover every little detail in this model because it's almost identical to the other ones I've reviewed in the past. So if you're curious about some of the weird functions in this that I'm, I'm not going to cover, maybe check out some of the older videos. This is pretty much the same uh, with a few differences, and those are the differences I'm going to cover in this video. But before I do that, I just want to show you everything that comes in this particular package. This one here comes with the short tip and the long tip. You can option to just get the long tip or the short tip. Um, it just comes with this little carrying case. You get a little mini stand to hold the iron. Uh, you get these additional copper uh, connectors for the short tip. Uh, I'll talk about this in, a, in, a little, in just a little bit. Little uh, Phillips head screwdriver, XD60 to 5525 barrel connectors is to power the soldering iron. And then you get uh, a little bit of solder included in the kit along with some stickers. And you get a manual and one side is in English, the other side is in Chinese. I'm not going to cover everything in the manual, but uh, let's go over really quickly how this works and how to turn it on, all that kind of stuff. But first, why the two different length of tips here? So, this is the long tip. It's uh, called the T12 tip. Sometimes uh, I think it's also called a T15 tip. And the reason this iron is different is that a lot of their other portable irons use the shorter tips, this one here. And I forget what this uh, is actually denoted as. But yeah, most of their other models use a shorter tip, but a lot of other soldering irons out there from like other companies use these longer tips. And also, um, if you want to have a more variety of uh, tips in terms of the what you can get on the end here, uh, there's a you can you know, there's more variety of them available in this longer T12 uh, form factor versus the shorter tip that I think you can only get from Secure. Uh, and also, you may have um, irons from other manufacturers that you want to use the tips that come with those with their products or a portable soldering iron, that, and, this, and these longer ones are probably the ones you're more likely to have. And the other reason why uh, people will opt for this longer um, tip is, I think it has something to do with the thermals because it's got more mass than the shorter tip. You know, inside this little metal thing here is a ceramic uh, core that goes all the way up. That's what's transferring the heat up up to the tip there uh, for for your soldering. And uh, with more mass in this uh, soldering tip, there's less fluctuation in the heat as you're, especially when you're trying to solder like very large wires, like say large XD60 wires, like you know 12 gauge, 10 gauge wire, something really big where you need a lot of heat. It's going to get drawn out of the iron. Um, having a longer tip can be advantageous uh, in that situation. Now, the way it works here, this is kind of interesting, I think this is the only one I've seen from Secure that has a transparent plastic case. But yeah, the tip just goes in like so. And you can see here where these contacts are made, which you know, actually is where the power is sent through the electricity on those contacts there. And those are for the longer tips. And you can see here, there's a couple of blank spots here for the shorter tips. So these contacts are not installed. You don't want them installed. You don't want both of them installed, the long contacts and the short contacts. You, you Basically, if you have the short contacts on here, then you can only use the short, the short tips. If you try to use the long tip when these are installed, then uh, you'll get a uh, notice on the screen saying there's a short, uh, short circuit in the iron and it won't function. But there's a video on the Secure website that shows how to install this. Basically, you just remove the screw here, take the cover off, and then you uh, install these little um, connectors, just like they do here, on those two points uh, with the screws that are included and this little hex key. And then you put the cover back on. Then you can use the shore tips if you happen to have other irons with the shore tips and you want to go ahead and use those. Otherwise, if you have longer tips, then you don't need to make this modification. You know, just ignore everything I just said the last uh, few minutes. You just have to, it will come default with for the longer tips. And you just stick them in. And then there's a little set screw here to um, tighten that down. And I'm told you probably don't want to tighten that down too tight because it might cause a short inside 
this metal casing. So just be aware of that. It's just so that it prevents it from slipping out. In fact, it'll work without even tightening the screw. So it's just mainly there so that the that the the tip here doesn't slide. As you can see, if it slides, then the it won't be able to you know, it won't be able to heat up. But as long as it has made contact here, it will turn on. And let's just go ahead and turn it on really quick. So you can power this up in two different ways: USB-C power delivery, or you can use the barrel connector, the 5525 barrel connector, and you can plug that in. And then you plug in a 3 to 6s battery here, and that will also power the iron. Go ahead and turn on with um, the USB-C and power delivery. I have a little power station here on my right, uh, 100 watt power station. Go ahead and turn it on. And then you can do firmware updates via the USB-C connector as well. If you want to connect your, to your PC, you can see the, you know, when you turn it on, uh, the version of the firmware it will show up on the startup screen, version 2.16. It will default in the, basically off. It's not gonna produce heat on the tip here. See, it's not the temperature is uh, 29 degrees Celsius. So I'll say stop to uh, turn it on. You long press the A button, so this is the A button and the B button, and then we'll go ahead and turn it on. Long press the A button, and say turn, uh, say work, and we'll go ahead and heat up to the standby temperature here at 300 degrees Celsius. So we'll go ahead and wait till it heat up. It heats up pretty quickly. I am on 100 watts of um, uh, USB C power delivery. So now we're all up to 300 really quick there, and um, yeah, it's kind of not drawing that much power. It's around, around it's kind of bouncing around 40 watts of power, and it goes up and down because it, it just it turns, it blips it on and off as it uh, uh, heats up the, or it tries to maintain the heat of 300 degrees Celsius. And I think to increase the temperature, you press B. Let's see, yeah, so it takes it from 300 to 350, 400, and 450, so 450 is the highest temp. And then to go down, let's see here, you just see, yeah, so just press the A button, takes it down in 50 degrees C increments. So set it to 350. To so get into the menu here, you long press the B button, and then to go to the different menu items, press the B button, Press A to select. Sorry. Uh, I think you long press B to select to go in there, and that shows you the information. And then, if you just wait a while, the menu will just disappear. And then you can see here, it is actually, I think when you go in the menu, it actually turns uh, the heat off on the um, tip. So hit stop there. But let's say if we turn it on, so long press A, that turns on the tip, and it'll boost up the temperature. If you long press A again, that will stop it and turn it off. But uh, in terms of the menu, I'm not going to go over everything in the menu. It's actually, you can see here, quite a, it's pretty comprehensive, all the things you can do, and it's actually uh, all denoted in the manual. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to cover that here. You can just read the manual. It's, it's it Basically, you don't really need to go in there to, unless you want to change something very specific. Uh, but for the most part, you can use it without even going into the menu. You just have to adjust the temperature to what you like, and it'll just work. Anyway, let's just go ahead and do a little quick test here. Turn it on, set the temperature to 400. And yeah, we're at 400 right away. Let's go ahead and just melt some solder on the tip here. Yeah, it's uh, working real well. And uh, if you um, just let it sit here, you don't do anything with it, it'll, it'll uh, do an idle timeout after 360 seconds and shut off the heat to the tip so you're not wasting electricity. Uh, I think there's a gyroscope in here somewhere. You can tell if it's being moved or not. So obviously if you're using it, it's not gonna time out. But if you put it down and you're not using it, then it'll eventually time out and shut itself off. Well, that's pretty much for this one. Uh, you wanna check out some of the other videos. I'm, you know, in terms of like this functioning and working, I, I have no doubt that it'll work totally fine. All the other models I've used uh, in the past have worked great. And this one seems like it's just another option here for those of you guys who have the longer tips um, and wanna use that. Uh, and there's also a lot more uh, variety in terms of tips available for the, 
the longer tips here. So, you know, and if you're looking for some kind of special tip that, that you know, isn't available in the secure store and maybe you already have some of those already, you know, obviously these are special needs. Uh, you're going to have a little more, more choices with these longer tips and that's what this iron is for and if you're looking for something that's portable. All right, that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know. Talk to you guys in the next one.